Hey there, Will Gibbons here. Just wanted to share a couple things with you. First, uh, the video you're about to see is an excerpt from my latest course called the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. And then in addition to that, I wanted to mention Keyshot 10.1 was just released. So I am looking forward to sharing a couple videos on that, some of the new features they've got in there. So be on the lookout for those coming very shortly. Without further ado, let's get into it. While using image-based lighting and HDRIs in Keyshot often makes for the easiest setup, the results that you get are not always the most ideal. They tend to excel for anytime you need a studio lighting environment, kind of like we have set up here that's very neutral and balanced. But there's times where you want to add a little more drama or have control over how these shadows and the shape of the light works. And oftentimes that requires going and using physical lights instead of an HDRI. So physical light refers to any time you use a piece of geometry, like for example, my sphere, and apply a light emitting material to it. So if I were to double click on it and make it something like an area light, it puts out light into the scene. Of course, it's way too bright, but you get the point. Now this is emitting light. And if I were to turn the brightness of my HDRI down, you will see that my sphere is still the light source in the scene and it is still casting light on my object. Now, this really kind of dynamic lighting where we have nice hard contrast between these uh, shadows and highlights, it's not impossible to get that result in the HDRI editor, but know that the actual behavior of the light, the shapes of the shadows and some of the other aspects here, we cannot get exactly with the HDRI editor for a few reasons. One, it has to do with placement of light source. So the HDRI editor is a big sphere around our entire scene. That means every light source in the HDRI editor is equidistant, the same distance from our scene, uh, the scene center. What that does is that means that the lights that are hitting our products are the same distance from each other. And what that does is it creates, again, less realistic and more boring lighting. In the real world, you have light sources that are often in different locations. So one can be, you know, on the left here, one can be closer to the surface, one can be further away. And you'll notice by me moving this around my scene, the results and the shape of the light and where the shadow goes and what it looks like, it changes depending on where this is placed. So that's one thing to control the actual location or distance a light is from your object. Another thing we can control is something like size. So if I scale this up, you'll see that we get really soft shadows. And if I scale this down, we get really, really sharp shadows. Hey there, Will Gibbons here, and I'm excited to announce my latest course, the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Now there are a few things that make the Masterclass special in my mind, and I wanna share those with you. The first is format. I built a big library of feature-based lessons that also is accompanied by project-based lessons. So by the time you're done, you will have built four portfolio-worthy renderings. It's got over 15 hours of recorded content, over 100 videos, 14 chapters, 12 quizzes, and a whole bunch of project files. So whether you're self-taught and hoping to fill some knowledge gaps and level up your skills, or if you're at the very beginning of your journey, hoping to learn as fast as you possibly can, this course is for you. I'm super excited to see you in chapter one of the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. What I mean is if we look here where the cable is casting a shadow, it's sharp. If I scale it up, it should get a much softer shadow. So we can't always control the shape of the shadow uh, to the greatest degree with the HDRI editor. We do have something called fall off that we can play with, but again, not quite as much control. And lastly, because we can apply a light material to an object, the shape of the object that is emitting light can also affect how light goes throughout the scene. So if we have a torus, which is shaped like a donut, that's gonna reflect light in a different way than if we were to just create a circular disc shape within the HDRI editor. So there are some benefits to using physical lights, but the downside is they often take longer to set up. They require a little bit more in-depth understanding of how things work in order to get the best results from them. 
and they can lead to problems like fireflies and some other uh, issues in your final scenes when you go to render. But often the trade-off is worth it as a lot of artists learn that the results they get from it are far more convincing and more pleasing. So we're going to go through all the different physical light material types and I'm gonna walk you through the different settings associated with each material type. And that way, when we go in to start using physical lights within our scene, you will find that you can sometimes use an HDRI and you can sometimes use physical lights to get the best results. So when we return to working on this Google Home Mini device and we want to light it in a realistic manner, you may find that the HDRI editor for its ease of use is the way to go. You may also find that to get a certain look or appearance, you have to use some physical lights. And last, there's nothing wrong with actually combining both physical lights and an HDRI. For example, I tend to often use an HDRI as a ambient light, which fills in the dark areas, but using physical lights for a key light source or a main light source can give you a bit more of a nice dynamic lighting, a little highlight, nice shadows, things like that. So like I said, in the next video, we're gonna run through all the types of light sources and uh, the pros and cons of each. Mm -hmm.